Hey guys, Kongo here, and today we're going to lose. They've just today posted some announcements and game updates about World of Tanks Modern Armor. So we're going to be taking a look at these. And, uh, yeah, we'll go in order. Let's see which one's first. This one is first. Error based matchmaking in Cold War Tech Trees. We'll skim through this, and then we'll go to the next, and we'll call it a day. It's just a quick news episode. Let's see. World Tanks Modern Armor. When World Tanks Modern Armor launches April 27th, you'll realize right away from the game's main menu what a monumental expan- <laughs> what a monumental expansion it is. On the main menu, you'll be able to see both World War II game mode and Cold War game mode available to you. Alright, let's talk about the unique gameplay features that each of these two game modes offers. World War II? Alright. The World War II game mode contains the World of Tanks console gameplay and World War II tanking action you know and love. And we've got big plans for this mode. We'll be adding new game content, including the recently announced Italian heavy tanks and more. Stay tuned over the next few weeks to learn more about what's coming for World War II. You'll be able to identify what you're playing, that you're playing in World War II mode when you see this icon in the top left corner of your vehicles tab. Cold War. All right. The Cold War game mode is the largest expansion to the World Tanks console experience, starting with the first two tank lines of, of Cold War, Western and Eastern Alliance main battle tanks. So, mm, probably mostly American and Russian right now. Cold War mode is the new addition that brings you, our dedicated commanders, highly anticipated features like error-based matchmaking and battles without artillery. For now. <laughs> well, we'll see, we'll see. You know how the choice to play the traditional World War II game you've grown to love over the years, or to discover these exciting features in the Cold War mode. The Cold War universe also offers a revolutionized system that classifies tanks into two new tech trees. The Western Alliance, Eastern Alliance. Alright. Very cool. Within those tech trees, you'll, ha you'll have access to powerful new Cold War vehicles with error-based matchmaking. What's error-based matchmaking? Each tank belongs to a sp specific era in the table below. There are three levels of tanks per era. Eras match make... Okay, that's weird because there's no ER, but they meant to do that. Eras match make within each other only. Post-war era tanks like the M47 Patton will never face the M1A1 Abrams, which is situated in the... Detena? I'm not even gonna try. Not even gonna try. Don't even ask me to, please. Okay, thank you. <laughs> this system has been designed to create closer games in terms of power levels of the tanks for more excitement and balance. Okay, so level one, late 1940s to mid 1950s, level two, 1960s to 1970s, and level three, 1980s to 1990s. You'll be able to identify with this little radiation emblem in the top left. Cool. Questions? Uh, no. Don't care. Oh, okay, here we go. Will I be able to use my silver for XP and gold in the Cold War mode? Yes, use them for whichever mode you want to play. That means that this does affect the core gameplay of World of Tanks, meaning now you have to choose where you want to spend your hard-earned credits and hard-earned free XP because now there are two different tech trees you have to grind. But guess what? It's, it's not like you're going to grind through them twice as fast. You're still just one person grinding that experience. So now you're going to be in a bit more trouble when it comes to needing credits. So this tells me that this is very monetized. This game mode is very monetized. They're trying to get the free-to-play players to spend money on premium tanks so that they have the credits to actually be able to play both game modes. Because as it stands, it's very hard to make money in this game. And or it takes a long time, a lot of grinding to make a lot of credits in this game in in World of Tanks in general. And now there's two game modes you have to spend your money on. People are gonna need premium tanks if they want to consistently play both both World War II and Cold War. So this is a monetized game mode. It's all a ploy to get more money. But obviously, it's a company. That's what they want to do. Um, but don't let them fool you when they tell you that this does not affect the core gameplay because it does. This affects the core gameplay now because you have to spend your credits you earn from the main game mode over here on the new game mode. So that's the first lie they have already. Which mode will be your favorite? Don't care. Alright, so we've already found a lie. Awesome. More gaming. Cool. Good job. Next. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. It's so easy. 
It's so easy. You just go through things. Oh, here's a line. Oh, here's a line. <laughs> Alright, what do we have here? Not selling black tanks anymore. Oh, wait, yes, there. Uh, that, that, this is loading. New tech tree vehicles. Let's take a look. Blah, blah. We talked about this. The Western Alliance. M46 Patton P. Is where it starts, it looks like. In the 1948, the U.S. Army began development of a new tank to replace the M26 Pershing heavy tank. A total of 1,168 M46 tanks in two basic variants were manufactured between 1949 and 1951. Because of its speed, mobility, and 90mm gun, the M46 patent saw wide use against Soviet-produced vehicles during the Korean War. Alright, well, it's just a patent. The M46, we've seen this before. It's a stock version. We'll see what it does. M47 Patton, post-war, medium. In, the in 1950, the U.S. Army found itself in dire need of new armor, the outbreak of the Korean War, and the need to counter the proliferation. Oh, I like that word. I think I need to use that. Of T-34-85 tanks pushed the Army to change forward with the new tank design. It took the vetted M46 chassis combined with the experimental but more powerful T-42 turret and gun and rushed the design into mass production, resulting in the M47 patent. However, the M47 patent arrived in Korea late in the war. As a result, many of these tanks were sent to European allies as a shield against possible invasion or use throughout the Cold War in training. Few saw actual combat. Then we have the M40A5 patent. We're not going to read about all of these, but it was used until the 1990s. Very cool. Then we have the M60 patent. There you go. It uses the 105, the new 105. Very cool, very cool. The M60A1 patent. There we go. M60A3 patent. The M1 Abrams. And we're not done yet. The M1A1 Abrams. The M1A2 Abrams. And there we go. Moving on with the Eastern Alliance, we have the T44. Followed by the T-54, followed by the T-62A, then the T-62, very cool, 115mm smoothbore gun, nice, the T-72A, these things are fast too, the T-72AV, with what looks like reactive armor on the sides, and more reactive armor on the T-72B, and the T-72BM. Oh, we're still going. The T-72BU. And that's where it stops. Very exciting stuff. Um, let's see how many tiers this is. One, two, three. T-62. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine tiers right now. Which is pretty good. It doesn't go all the way to tier ten, but it doesn't need to. Uh, we'll see how this mode plays out, um, and what tanks face each other. I'm not a history expert, but we'll see. Yeah. Very cool. Very, very, very cool. Um, of course, the M46 and the M48A5 and the M60, those are all in the World War II tech tree. But they're not World War II tanks. Okay, there's... Wargaming is saying, <laughs> if you if you go and look around at, as to what Wargaming is saying, they're saying World War II tanks will not be playing in this mode. But they're also calling the tech tree that m some of these tanks come from the World War II tech tree. So I think they need to start getting their facts in check, the facts in order. As far as history goes, there will be no World War II tanks in this mode. As far as the tech tree goes, there will be World War II tanks. Is it, does that make sense? No, it doesn't because yeah, it's wargaming. What do you want? What do you want? But as far as history goes, there will be no World War II tanks in this mode. And so when wargaming says there's no World War II tanks in this mode, that's what they mean. They're not referring to their tech tree, which is called the World War II tech tree. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is coming in two weeks, for 13 days. I'll definitely be streaming, playing this. Um, s save your credits, I guess, because like I said, you're gonna need them. As sad as that is, I was kind of hoping this would have a separate XP system where you just ground XP once you got to the next tier unlocked. You just got it. 
but it doesn't look like they're doing that. It looks like you're going to have to use your hard-earned cash that you grind in the regular game. So now it's like, oh, do I go and buy myself a new IS-7? Or do I go invest this money I've spent two weeks grinding over in the Cold War era mode? So, yeah. Like I said, everything's now going to take twice as long to grind if you decide to play this game mode. And uh, already that's a little bit of a fault I see in the mode. We'll see if they get that looked at. Probably not. But there you go. More gaming. Um, why don't you take a look at that? You've got 13 days to figure it out. And uh, that would be appreciated. That's it. I hope you guys all enjoyed. If you did, slap that like button. Comment, subscribe. Make sure you go check out Space Bandit. Link in the description below. If you want to check out my book, link to that in the description below as well. And I'll be seeing you guys all later. Take care, everyone, and peace out.